Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we'll make some super soft and fluffy Turkish sesame bagels. These were so sweet and soft, they're the perfect breakfast treat. And you could have them with savory or sweet fillings, or just eat them as they are. I prefer them with some butter and some jam. Delicious. So keep watching if you want to learn how to make these. And as always, you'll find a full recipe with all the details down in the description box. And I of course write all my recipes with metric and imperial units. So first let's see what equipment we need. A tray with some non-stick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, we need a temperature probe and a brush. That's it. Now on to the ingredients. Some strong white bread flour, some milk, salt, yeast, sugar, some oil, I use rapeseed oil, but you can use olive oil, some soft butter, sesame seeds, an egg white and an egg yolk. So before we start, my kitchen is quite warm, so I want cold milk. And if you'd like to learn all about controlling dough temperature, click the link in the top right corner. But for now, let's get our bowl, add the milk, add the yeast, salt, in with the sugar, then comes the oil, and after that, in with the egg white. And we're using the egg white for the dough and the egg yolk for the glaze. Now give it all a good mix. You want to hydrate the yeast and dissolve any large sugar crystals. And now, add the last ingredient, the flour. Then grab your scraper and start mixing. You want to mix it in a bowl until you don't see any more dry flour. Then tip it out on the table and you start kneading it. This dough is quite sticky and stretchy, so we'll use the stretch and fold method for kneading it. What you want to do is pick the dough up by one side, stretch it against the table towards yourself and fold it over. The whole process should not take more than 7 minutes. If you've never done this before, don't worry, it's not that difficult. You can also click the link in the top right corner to watch a full detailed video on how to knead dough by hand. And of course practice makes perfect. The more times you do it, the better you'll get at it, and the quicker you'll be able to do it. Now if the dough is sticking a lot to the table and to your hands, just use your scraper once in a while to scrape it up. You can also wet your hands with water once in a while, just to prevent them from sticking. And it's been around 7 minutes, the dough is still a little bit sticky, but it's nice and smooth and stretchy. It's ready to go. Now let's get it in a bowl and take the temperature. 25 to 26 degrees Celsius is just what I was aiming for. We'll cover it up and let it ferment for around 35 minutes. Now if your dough is warmer and your kitchen is warmer, this will take less time. If it's cooler, it will take longer. You be the judge. But after the first proof, we want to give it a fold. Folding is quite beneficial for a bread dough. It will help us degas it or knock it back. It will create extra layers in gluten structure and will also equalize the temperature in the dough. To perform a fold, dust this dough lightly with flour because it's a little bit sticky. Release it from the bowl, place it on your table, smooth side down, stretch it out, then fold the edges over the middle, going around in a circle until you reach the point where you started. And you have a nice tight ball. Then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, pick it up, pinch the seam together at the bottom, then place it back into the bowl, cover it up, and we'll leave the ferment for another 35 minutes. And it should really start puffing up now. And after the second proof, we can divide it. Now we're making four bagels, and each bagel is made up of two dough pieces. So we're going to divide this dough into eight. To prevent it from sticking, dust it lightly with flour. Don't go too crazy. It's always easier to add more than to take off. Then release your dough from your bowl using your scraper, place it out on the table and get your scales. I do sometimes flour the scale as well, just so the dough doesn't stick. Now weigh it and divide the total amount by 8. And the dough scraper is a really versatile tool for the baker. We used it to mix the dough, we used it to release the dough from the bowl, we used it to divide the dough. The scraper, the temperature probe and scales. Holy trinity, you really need those to make proper bread. Right enough of that, after dividing we need to pre-shape. Flatten your dough piece out, make sure your hands are flour so they don't stick, and then fold the sides over each other and fold the top down and fold the bottom over that. You want them to be kind of like blunt cylinder shape. After pre-shaping, cover them up and we'll let them rest. We need to rest the dough before its final shaping to let the gluten relax and make it easier for us to roll out. So it's been 15 minutes, we can start shaping. And once again I'm going to repeat myself. 
Use some flour, but don't use too much. A light dusting will do. It's always easier to add more than to take off. And the final shaping is super simple. Make sure your hands are floured, and take a dough piece and just roll it out. You can make them longer or shorter, that's up to you. Just don't make them too short. And because each bagel is made up of two dough pieces, you want to roll them to the same length. And always be careful, you don't want to force the dough. If it's not stretching, then you might need to relax it for 5 more minutes. But this was quite soft and easy to roll out. And now comes the crucial part. Take your two dough pieces, connect them at the top and swing them around each other. Then roll them up and connect them at the ends. And that's your bagel, simple as that. And this was my first time making these, so it wasn't too bad for the first try. And if I can do it, you can do it. And as I always say, if you mess up the first one, you still have three more to practice on. Get at least one that will look beautiful. Now, once you've made your bagels, get your tray with non-stick paper and place them on there. Make sure you leave enough space between them because they will rise as they are proofing and baking. Now at this point we can start preheating our oven to 160 degrees celsius with a fan on. You might want to dust these lightly with flour just so that the cling film doesn't stick. The egg white in this dough makes it a little bit sticky. Now cover them up and we'll let them ferment for around 30 minutes. You want them to almost double in size. Now look at those babies rise, they look perfect. Now there's a couple more steps we need to take before we bake them. We're gonna grab our egg yolk, which I have mixed with one teaspoon of milk to make the glaze, and brush them all over. This will give them a beautiful shiny golden brown crust. And now don't be shy with the sesame seeds, sprinkle them all over. One thing you can do after sprinkling is to press the seeds in lightly with your hand, just so they stick really well. And that is it, let's get these babies in the oven. They should not take more than 25 minutes or so. And once they have puffed up nicely, and they're golden brown all over, they're ready. And don't they look great? They're so soft and sweet. Now let's get them on the rack to cool down slightly, and enjoy. Oh, but actually, you know what you can do to make them extra nice? Brush them with some soft butter, just as they come out of the oven. I've been doing this with my sweet breads lately. It's a really good way to make them shine. And of course you can't have too much butter in your life, right? But that's your Turkish bagel. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, write them down in comments. Check out my other videos as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.